Hello, my name is Alan Biermacher and I am the Technical Operations Director here at Digital Drafting Systems. This video today is the latest in a new series that we're going to be starting up regarding Autodesk uh, common technical issues that we see often here. We figured it might be helpful for some of you to have some videos out there that address some of these issues. So the first issue that we're going to be talking about in today's video is going to be the Revit failed to start or Revit worker.exe errors. Now, these errors typically uh, present again in one of the following ways for Revit 2024 at the moment, probably for future releases in the near future. You'll see a Revit failed to start error like we're seeing here towards the top of the screen. Or for Revit 2023 and earlier, we're seeing them like this down here, Revit worker.exe was not found. Additionally, here on the right side, you do see what you'll see in those Revit journal files if you go look for them in terms of the errors and failures that you may run into. Okay, so what might be causing these errors? So this list is actually from Autodesk. They have a Knowledge Network article that refers to all of this and has all, most of this information that we're gonna be covering today. And you will see links for that uh, both in the blog post that we create as well as in the description for the video. But uh, again, we figured we'd run through it with you guys and, and just make sure everything made sense here. So some of the common reasons are either a cyber reason block of the Revit worker process, a Revit worker.exe file being set to run as administrator, or the Windows issues, which uh, is the most the more common side of things. So pending missing or corrupted Windows update, permissions rights being incorrectly set, or the more common one, corrupt Windows management instrumentation service. So we're going to talk about these one by one and how you address each of these situations. But we're actually going to kind of go upside down here. I'm going to start with what we've seen to be the most common, which is the corrupted Windows management instrumentation service. So let's go ahead and jump ahead here. All right. So this is the most common cause of this error message, like I mentioned. Uh, in order to verify that you do, in fact, have this issue before you go through with, with the actual correction for it, uh, there are some steps right here on the screen. You can pause this and take a look at this, but I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, do these steps for you. So if we go ahead and open our Windows Start menu and we type msinfo32.exe and we press Enter, so you're going to see here that this is going to show me a whole bunch of information. If you're seeing all this information, this is not your issue. If you are having this issue and instead of seeing all this information you are seeing this sort of thing here that says can't collect information that tells you that it is the windows management instrumentation piece that's faulty or that's having trouble so how do we go ahead and fix this so again take a look at this if you'd like um, you can pause the video walk through this step by step but i'm actually going to go ahead and show you right now how we run this fix Okay, so in order to go ahead and actually correct this issue, we're going to take a couple of steps. So the first step is going to be to stop the Windows Management Instrument Service. And so in order to do that, we're going to click our Windows key here on the keyboard, and uh, we are going to type in Services. And so it is important to go ahead and run the Services uh, application as an admin. So you can do that either by clicking here, Run as Admin, or by doing a right-click on the Services, clicking Run as Administrator you're going to be asked to enter your administrator information. Uh, some of you, depending on the way that your Windows is set up, may just get a pop-up asking you to say yes or no. You'll go ahead and click yes on that. So once we see our services here, we're going to scroll all the way towards the bottom until we find the Windows uh, Management Instrument Service, okay, Instrumentation Service. So right here we see it's running. We're going to go ahead and right-click and say stop right here or with this selected you can go ahead and click on the stop button here at the top so let's go ahead and just stop that service there may be some things here that it's uh, needing to stop in order to stop that service as well you go ahead and click yes on that so once you've stopped that service the next step is basically going to be to create this batch file so in order to do this again we're gonna go to our Windows menu we're gonna open notepad you can just type in notepad and open it up and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and copy and paste uh, some code here and so i'll show you that right here this is what it is that we're actually going to be pasting in here 
Uh, I will actually have a downloadable link in the description of the video as well as on the blog post. And um, on the blog post itself, I'll have a uh, an actual write-out of this so you can just copy and paste it yourself. We are going to go ahead and copy this data into here. And so once we've got that copied into here, what we're going to do is we're going to say file, save. And then uh, the name on this is not that relevant, really. Um, we just have to make it something that we remember. Uh, the Autodesk guy suggests titling it this. And then just the important part here at the end is to make sure it's .bat instead of .txt. And then this save as type, you're going to want to change to all doc, all files, I'm sorry. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and now say uh, save. Autodesk does suggest that you put this somewhere where you're going to remember it. They suggest in the Autodesk folder in your root directory. I'm just going to throw it in my downloads folder for now and say save. And so once that's saved, I'm just going to go ahead and close that, uh, that window there. So now that we've gone ahead and closed that, let's go ahead and grab our file explorer here and go to that location. So we're in our downloads folder. And what we're going to do here is we're going to right click on that file that we've created and we're going to click run as administrator. Again, you're going to be prompted for your administrator information. And uh, once you've input that, it's going to go through and basically ask you to say yes or no here. And so basically we are going to just go ahead and say yes and we're going to press enter and so this is going to go through and fix a whole bunch of things it's going to check and fix a variety of things on your computer just give it some time it is going to take a couple of minutes here and once this project uh, this uh, process is completed this will go ahead and just close itself out uh, once it's done that you can go ahead and try to rerun revit i'm not having the issue myself so reopening revit's not going to really help us here but reopening Revit past this point should get you back in successfully. Now, if that's not the case, we are going to cover some other possibilities here in just a moment. As you can see, it is quite a process. So that was it. It went ahead and closed for us, and now we are done. So at this point, you should uh, be fixed if that was your issue. Okay. So now let's cover some other possibilities in case this wasn't your issue. In case the um, the issue is is some other or has some other source. So okay. So here are a couple other possibilities. So Windows issue pending, or missing, or corrupted Windows updates. If that is the case, you'd have to basically just consult with your IT professional. They should be able to help you roll back to a previous Windows update that will hopefully not have that issue built into it. And uh, you can wait for a, another update basically to come out and supersede the existing one with the problem. The next issue could be a permissions issue. In those cases, basically what you'd want to do is you'd want to verify that uh, all users have essentially full control to this folder location. It's going to be your C colon backslash users backslash public backslash public documents backslash Autodesk. And on the registry side, you'd want to make sure again, full control is set for users at this uh, key location here. So it's key underscore local underscore machine backslash software backslash Autodesk. All right. So the other possibility are one of these two. So first, if the Revit worker.exe is running as admin. So essentially what happens here is that Revit is not running as administrator, but this Revit worker component is. And so when that's the case, those two are not really able to talk to each other and that's what's causing the error. So the best way to test this and see if that's what's what your issue is, is to go ahead and run Revit as administrator. And if that error message doesn't show up, then that tells you that they're now communicating because they're both running as administrator. Um, and so the way to check that is to just, again, go to your Windows menu, look for your Revit, and then uh, go ahead and just do a right click run as administrator. And again, if you don't see that error message this way, but you do see it when you open Revit normally, that's your issue. So how do we fix that? So let's go ahead and grab just a file explorer here. And so essentially we're going to have to go to our uh, program files area. So let's go to this PC. We go to our C drive. Let's open this up just a little bit. 
we're going to go down to our program files and in our program files we're going to go to Autodesk we are going to go to that version of Revit specifically that we were having the issue with so let's say Revit 2024 and let's see here if we find our Revit worker file so here's our Revit worker file so if we do a right click properties we can see here under the uh, compatibility tab we have run this program as administrator this may be checked on so we want to make sure this is checked off and then we're going to go ahead and click OK to save that so once that's done again if that was your issue that should fix the issue let's go ahead and close out of here and the last reason potentially is the uh, cyber reason problem and so if cyber reason is running on your system try temp temporarily disabling it if that clears the error that tells you that it is that that's interfering and in that case Autodesk suggests that you basically reach out to cyber reason support uh, to see basically for updates and to see if they're able to help you prevent it from interfering with uh, the Revit worker process okay well that's the conclusion of this video we hope you found this helpful um, as always please don't hesitate to reach out to us you can find our uh, website at ddscad.com uh, if you'd like to reach out to us you can email us or give us a call to the phone number or email on screen okay thank you all so much for being here bye-bye